Hi everybody, Dr. Aulis here. In this short video, we're going to talk about a process called endochondral ossification. Endochondral ossification sounds big and long and scary, but literally if we translate endochondral ossification, all it means is inside cartilage, endochondral, ossification, bone building. Most of the bones in your body are built from a cartilage model made out of hyaline cartilage that we transition into bone tissue. The exception to that are the type of bones in our body called flat bones. So this is bones like the skull bones, bones like the sternum. These kinds of bones are not made from a cartilage model. They're made from, from a membrane of connective tissue. So as you're studying and looking at online resources, you may hear of a process called intramembranous ossification. That's what these flat bones use to get made. Everybody else, endochondral ossification, inside cartilage bone building. When we talk about the process of endochondral ossification, we have to start with a cartilage model. So we've built a cartilage model very early in embryonic development. When that model gets large enough, some cells called osteoblasts, my bone builders, build preliminary bone tissue around the middle of that bone. What they've built is something that's called a bone collar. This bone collar makes the, the bone cells really excited. Look what I've made, I've made bone tissue. The problem is bone tissue is not very good at letting oxygen and nutrients get through it. So as we've blocked the oxygen and the nutrients to my cells in the middle, these cells start to die. Now remember from our discussion of tissues, this beginning part chondro means cartilage. So chondrocytes are my cartilage cells that are found in the middle of this model. As I block off their oxygen and their nutrients, they begin to die. And as they're dying, they start to ossify. So ossify means we're grabbing calcium from our environment, we're turning into uh, bone tissue. The way these cells are able to do this is because of a blood vessel that comes into uh, this region. So the blood vessel that comes in brings oxygen and nutrients and helps us to develop something called the primary ossification center. So my primary ossification center in the center of the bone brings oxygen and nutrients, though at this point it's too late to save the chondrocytes. What it also brings with it are osteoblast cells, bone building cells. Those cells start to build bone tissue in the middle of my cartilage model. That bone tissue is going to, to help develop that spongy bone in the middle of the bone. As we continue to grow that bone tissue, we uh, then are going to send blood vessels into the ends of our bone. When blood vessels enter the ends of my cartilage model, we start to build what are called secondary ossification centers. So my primary ossification center, when I first start building bad bone tissue in the middle, I send in my blood vessels, bringing with them my bone builder cells, we generate this bone tissue in the middle, and around the time of birth, we build these secondary ossification centers where bone tissue grows in the epiphyses of the bone as well. As you're studying, make sure we know where my two types of ossification centers are found, and make sure we know that the primary ossification center develops before blood vessels come into my bone, and the secondary ossification center develops after the blood vessels come into my cartilage model.